Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time is Wednesday. And that means we have the one and only Anna Kelly. Hi, Anna. Hey, good to be here. Yes. Hey, you know what I want to do here? I want to play a little what if. I want to paint a vision of the future and just ask you if it's dark and scary, what would Anna do? You ready? I'm ready. All right, Anna. For the next five years, we have 0% appreciation. We have rates that let's say are four and a half percent, right? On the 30 year, you know, debt versus three and a third or whatever it is today. And uh, obviously in an environment like that, Anna, you can't make any money. The world is over, real estate's dead and you've got to go invest in crypto, right? <laughs> That's funny. <In> a, <laughs> I made her laugh, world, that was good. In a world like that, I'm still buying real estate all day long. Yeah. Because rates are still extremely low at four and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, by the way, I don't think that scenario will really happen. Yeah, and the reason is because if rates are going up and I own assets, my assets are going to go up in value too. Yeah. Maybe not as fast and as much as they did in the last year, um, but my rents are going to go up with inflation. My values in multifamily are going to go up when, when rates go up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be able to continue to raise rents, I believe, because I'm, in, I'm investing in areas that have low supply and high demand. So I'm really not worried. I'm not doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? Even if I couldn't raise rents and my values didn't go up, I don't buy for major appreciation. Right, I right. want appreciation, and I'm going to force appreciation with multis, but I'm buying deals that actually cash flow today. And if they cash flow today, they'll keep cash flowing tomorrow. Yeah. One of the things that I wanted to be clear here when I was thinking 0%, you know, four and a half, even 6%, I don't care what the interest rates are. I actually would welcome a 0% appreciation for five years for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, people don't realize I buy, I only buy for cash flow. I, I mean, I live in California. California is one of those markets that's up, it's down, but you know, I, I don't look at it except when I got to fill out a PFS statement, right? For her right. personal financial statement. I would love an environment of zero percent appreciation because, again, I've been doing this a long time. Real estate to people business, life happens, divorce, job move, all of this. What would happen if there were zero percent appreciation in Fresno for five years? Well, there would be a lot of people, frankly, stuck. One of the reasons that appreciation works and it helps people is they can get out because there's six percent selling costs. Right. Right. You have an FHA loan or a VA loan and you get in for 3% or less and there's 0% appreciation, you're stuck. You can't sell. Right. right? Cause you got to pay five, six, seven, eight percent in total fees. Well, an investor like me might come along and do a subject to deal and go, Hey, I'll give you a couple of grand, you know, to move, to clean it up and I'll take it over. And yeah, the, the loan will stay in their name. But I mean, there's the, the ability to do creative deals in an environment with 0% appreciation is astronomical. And I would, I would welcome that environment. I actually don't like double digit appreciation because it brings out all the crazies, right? Like we just talked about in video one, when appreciation's 10, 12, 13%, everybody comes, it makes my job harder. Yes. That's, yes. that's crazy, right? That's a really good point. That's a really good analogy because I've done some creative finance deals and I have a few single family houses but mostly I play in the multifamily space, right? So we don't get quite as many creative deals. Mm -hmm. I've done a bunch of deals where I have a seller hold a second sure. or on small multifamily, I might be able to get them to hold a first for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, but on the larger multifamily, we don't get yeah. as many creative deals. Um, and we really do try to buy for forced appreciation. So what I love about the multi-units is even though I may not have real appreciation of real estate going up 4% a year or whatever, I can always force appreciation. If I buy a property that's poorly managed, rents are super, super low, and I can basically just bring them up to current market without a heavy value add, I'll force the appreciation all day long and I'll still make money. Mm -hmm. So whether you're a single family investor doing creative deals like you or a multifamily investor forcing appreciation we can still make a really good return even in an environment like that where real estate's not generally going up. Yeah, I, again, I want everybody, everybody thinks, you know, the people watch these channels that we're out here pumping real estate to go. I don't want it to. I don't like when I've been, again, Fresno, California, you can go look it up. 2005 and six was the number one appreciating market. 
at the end of 2006, I had to sell all my houses because I couldn't make the next one work. Right. I didn't, right. I, I came in trying to buy for cash flow. It didn't work. Now, yes, I 1031 into apartments and all worked out, but I would love five years, 0% appreciation because I would add more and more units to my portfolio and they'd be res again, residential, right? It could be, it could be four plexus, tries, quad or duplexes. So, um, right. I would, um, again, I, I think we are headed into a real estate slowdown. I think 2020 was the time we were going hundred miles an hour. This is mainly residential, but apartments for the most part too, we're going to go 50 and then 30 and then 20. So uh, I would welcome a, a slowdown for sure. Yeah, I, I think we're definitely starting to already see, you know, some slowing in the amount of appreciation. Mm -hmm. I think in a lot of markets where you still have, you know, less supply than you do demand, especially in the Southeast, for example, I think you're still going to have home values increasing. They're just not going to be double digit increases every year. It might be, you know, 6%, 5%, 4% kind of slow, yeah. uh, but I don't see much of a scenario where there's just totally flat real estate, at least yeah. Yeah. in the Southeast, Southwest. Yeah. The, the, the smile states, right? The sand states yes. or whatever they call them. Yeah. No, yeah. I totally agree. I don't see it, but I just wanted to put it out there. Right? If it happened, I would actually be more excited about a flat five years than another year at 12% because it's hard. Yeah. I can't, I can't buy anything. It is hard. You're right. It is. You know, it's, it's hard to do really, really great deals and very many of them in this mm -hmm. market. Yeah crazy times. So Anna, that was a fun conversation. How can people follow you? Sure. You can find me here every single Wednesday on one rental at a time. And you can follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram at Anna, REI mom, Kelly, and my website at reimom.com. Very cool. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you.